Attitudes towards women in sport have changed dramatically over the last 40 to 50 years. Women have more opportunities to take part in sports and there are now more women playing games once perceived as male-only activities such as rugby and football. There are also more women in positions of authority and women have more media exposure than they did 40 years earlier. However, obstacles still exist and women still don't have the same rewards and treatment in sport as men do. Equality is still a long way off. Women are now running faster, jumping higher and throwing further than ever before. In some sports, they are even competing on the same level as men at elite standard. Michelle Wee is an example of a female golfer who has now played alongside men in a number of PGA Tour events. Women now have access to sports such as boxing, which they were previously banned from. And the number of women and girls playing football and rugby, once a men-only area, is growing rapidly in schools and clubs every year. In fact, football is the fastest growing female sport in the UK. More women have been accepted into positions of authority, such as Wendy Toms, who was the first woman to referee in the Football League, and Karen Brady, the first woman to become Chief Executive of a Premiership Football Club, as well as Hope Powell, the first ever female manager of the women's national football team. Kate Hoey was also Sports Minister from 1999 to 2001, which was unheard of at the time. However, Women still do not receive as much prize money in sport as men do. In tennis, for example, women have demonstrated they can play explosive and dynamic tennis, which is admired all over the world. At Wimbledon, though, male singles and doubles players receive over £600,000 more than their female counterparts. Although women now have more media coverage than ever before, it still is nowhere near the amount men receive. Men's sport is on television and in the press every day. It dominates the back pages. Only recently has women's media coverage increased. Sky Sports is now championing women's netball and women's athletics and football now get regular coverage throughout the year. But as long as prejudice and chauvinism exist, women will continue to struggle in achieving the same status in sport as men. This next clip demonstrates the type of treatment women still receive right, today. I want five strong kids. You three, Colin and uh, Jim. Oh, come on, I'm a strong kid. Dean, off you go. Over to the sheds. Oh, come Goodman. on, I'm a strong kid. Come on, hurry up. How come the boys do everything? Off that. Boys always play cricket and football, and the girls play netball and hockey. We don't get a break. Uh, cricket's boys' sport, Louise. Cricket's boys' sport. A lot of girls can't be bothered playing sports. The boys don't want the girls to play. There's no variety of activities, and the teacher can't see if there's anything wrong. I want a better deal. So what sort of better deal? Well, more choice of sports and activities, equal opportunity and fairness. Yeah, but games like cricket, they're for boys. Oh, ball they are. I mean, it was women who invented overarm bowling. What do you mean? Well, men used to bowl underarm, right? And, well, women, they invented overarm bowling so they wouldn't get all tangled up in their skirts and that. It took men 60 years to adopt it. To adopt what? To officially adopt overarm bowling. The Women's Sports Foundation is an agency set up to combat these prejudices. In November 2006, the Active People survey released through Sport England found that only 18% of women regularly take part in sport compared to 24% of men. Only 9% of women take part in competitive sport as opposed to 22% of men. The Women's Sport Foundation are focused on changing these statistics and they aim to inform, influence and motivate women all over the country 
of the importance of taking part in sport and recreation. They have a lot of work to do to turn a tide driven by a male-dominated majority. Remember the following things for the GCSE PE course. Firstly, how attitudes have changed towards women over the years. Secondly, examples of women competing alongside men. Thirdly, examples of women in authority and power in sport. Fourthly, differences between men and women's sport. And lastly, the Women's Sports Foundation and the aims that they have.